Good afternoon, everybody. So I want to share a little story with you. Be very mindful with this honor. Amen. God looks at loyalty, faithfulness and honor. I once attended a church and uh, this the, the pastor's a spiritual father um, is from Zambia in Africa. And sorry. Well, yes, that's correct. The pastor's spiritual father is from Zambia in Africa, but the, the pastor's spiritual father also has a spiritual son. And the spiritual son, I believe, is either, I think he's the richest man in Zambia or one of them. The man is beyond wealthy. The man owns nearly every petrol station in Zambia. He's rich. And do you know what happens? He just travels the world behind some, when he can, behind his spiritual father, taking his Bible. When he goes to preach, he just puts his Bible um, on the pulpit and sit down and humble himself. And because of this humility under the spiritual father, God has granted him unusual favor and unusual riches. The man is rich and he shared his testimony about how his money started to come in when he started to honor the man of God. You see, um, we're in the time where we are hearing where, where this honor seems to be the norm. Where if you are a, a man or woman of God, people will say, oh, yes, I know you're a man, woman of God, which, of the, which either sex it may be. They declare, confess, they know that you're a man or woman of God. But still they will dishonor you. They will gossip about you, slander about you. They will slay to you. Some of them would even go as far as to try to put a curse or a spell on you. So what are we saying? We are seeing a lot of lawlessness in the house of God. And, and this is why many people are living under curse. They aren't blessed. Um, because when you begin to carry on with this lawless kind of lifestyle to the point that, you know, people are calling even the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, sometimes instead of typing Jesus Christ, they put JC, HP. And when people begin with this kind of lawless dishonor, you're going to attract the way you are amen when you begin to dishonor the servants of god there is going to be a drought there's going to be a lack of blessing a lack of favor in your life you're going to find yourself encountering unusual spiritual warfare and turbulences you're going to find yourself in a place of 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 of, of, of a curse instead of the blessing and this can be evidence evident um, several places over the Bible. Amen. We're seeing this, this lawless spirit where I can say what I want. God has given me the ability to, to, to shut you down, to speak curses against you. And this is not the spirit of God. That is not the anointing of God. That is not a gift nor calling from God. Because the Bible says that a house divided against itself cannot stand. The heavens and the earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. Pass away meaning that Jesus is not going to do something against his own word. Amen, somebody. So we are, what we are literally seeing is the Jezebel spirit. Any person who is doing such in the house of God, or against servants of God, or even in other circumstances, it either has or is being influenced by the Jezebel spirit. And I'm sure there are other spirits connected to the Jezebel spirit, but should we go through the whole list, it will take ages. Amen. So what am I saying? Who are you honoring today? So that story showed me something. Many of you are dishonoring the set man or woman that God has put over your life. When was the last time you paid your pastor's rent? Have you ever said to God that, oh, I want to pay your, your pastors or whoever it is rent for a year or six months or something to test the goodness of God? When was the last time that you did something unusual? Amen. When was the last time that you went out of your way to say, hey, you know, my woman of God, whatever. And um, by the way, I, I, I think I, I believe in thinking big. So you might hear me just say some some examples that might be a little bit unusual. Amen. So here, um, here, man of God, you know, bah, 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 bah. here, I want to bless you for all the work you've done for the Lord with a hundred thousand, a hundred million. Let me just say something crazy. Amen. When was the last time you went out of your way to honor those whom God has set over you in service. 
to honor them in fear of the Lord and in humility before the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, very rare you see this kind of honor, but in places like Africa, this is why to me, many people from the continent of Africa uh, carry such childlike faith to the point that the false prophets take advantage of them because when they hear man of God, they are humble, they become afraid. So the false prophets see this vulnerability and, and begin to move in like a predator and take advantage of such. Amen. But in the continent of Africa, they fear. They fear the living God. Amen. They have fear and reverence for the living God. Of course, the spirit of lawlessness is everywhere, yeah, amen, from east, west, north, and south. But their fear and have reverence for the living God. When was the last time that you really honored your apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist? Amen. When was the last time? Amen. When was the last time that you honored them? Amen somebody so this is why the bible says my people perish for the lack of knowledge elijah said to the woman at sarafat bake me a little cake first if your pastor or somebody reaches out and say look here's what the lord is saying you go and you get with people you begin to say oh maybe they robbed me they put me in this they put me in that amen you begin to go and slander and slate and begin to try to amen this is not the spirit of God. This is the lawless spirit. This is a spirit of witchcraft, sorcery, divination, whatever you want category. I'm sure that it has some connection to this spirit. Amen. So this is why the fear of God needs to come back, needs to come back to his house because there's a lack of fear. Amen. Everybody wants to be a leader. Nobody wants to follow. Amen. You got people out there who come. I've seen people connect to my ministry doing all kinds of stuff, you know, to me. But they, they just want to be appointed into a position of influence. The Jezebel spirit, a person with a Jezebel spirit is looking for someone to say, oh, you're prophet, prophetess. And watch and see what will happen. They will disappear in a few seconds. Why? That is all they are looking for. They are looking for influence that they are not entitled to. Or I want you, I want to say something to you now. A person could have a Jezebel spirit and God could still say that person is a prophet or prophetess. But that may not mean that in the current state, God is ready for them in that state. There's a process. They maybe need to get deliverance, healing, then begin to walk with the Lord until they mature, until that call manifests. It doesn't mean you take the word and you fly and you run and you jump and you begin to tell people you're a prophet and begin to prophesy. No. And many people are doing this. And for this reason, many people are falling. And met some people are even perishing. And not completing their God-given assignments to the end. Amen. Somebody. So when a prophecy, God is not talking to the demon in you. He's talking to you. He's talking to you, his creation. Amen. Of course, he can address the spirit and cast it out, etc. Amen. But he's talking to you. Amen. So often people will get it. They run. They run. You, you haven't even sought the Lord, prayed fast. You know, dwell in his presence and let the Lord begin to teach you, train you, build you up. Amen. I've seen all kinds of strange stuff happening. I'm telling you, there are many people sitting. They just want you to say they are apostle, prophet, a pastor, something. And you will notice an almost instant change. This is all they want, even though the bread is not properly cooked. How many of you know a bread could look beautiful on the outside? But when you push that long metal pork in it, the inside isn't cooked. And this is why there's also so much turbulence and interference in the house of God. When was the last time you went out of your way to honor the man or woman of God? There are some of you, the minute your pastor, whoever even talks about finances, oh, you, oh, they want to rob me. But still, you're believing God for finances. If you haven't read the Bible, according to the word of God, if you don't give, you do not get. As you give, it is given unto you. He who gives sparingly will reap sparingly. Amen. And the verses go on and on about giving. 
with regards to that specific area. Amen. If you don't give, you don't get. That's the Bible. I didn't write it. That's what's in the Bible. So you got some people that challenge every single message on earth about giving everyone, but still they're waiting and they never receive from God. Ignorance personified. Amen. So I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will begin cleansing to his house. I pray that the Lord will open the understanding of his people. I pray that they will repent because I am seeing the Jezebel spirit and nearly in, in, in you, you're seeing this Jezebel spirit. I would say maybe twice or three times out of every 10 people in the house of God. And I'm just wondering how the men of God are not challenging this. So what I have come to understand is that there are many ministries. You'll say all oh, these thousands of churches packed with thousands of people because if these pastors and men of God began to challenge these Jezebel spirits begin to go after the enemy masquerading in the house of God you will soon realize that the things of thousands drop to very few number and amen when you begin to take that line amen but people want to look good by having a huge excuse me massive and vast congregation and people run oh, oh oh you know the lord is there the lord is there look 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 how they're multiplying really don't you know satan gets provision also it's a very common in africa that many pastors are going to witch doctors to increase their church can you believe that in africa yeah pastors are going to witch doctors for charms to get witchcraft so that people would come to their church a lot of churches you see in Africa is because the, the, the witch doctors are bringing. So what kind of people do you think they are bringing to God's house? Amen. They're bringing people of a light spirit. Amen. So nonetheless, wisdom is justified by your children. Many of you, um, God, the Bible says that God has set his authority in specific places. And many of you are challenging, you are cursing, you're not submitted, you're not humble to the different authorities that God has placed in your life. And you are and you're wondering why your life is constantly in shambles. While you're running around like 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 a, like a ship without a dock, amen. Or like an ant from port to port. Amen. So God bless you all indeed and may the Spirit of God bring change in your heart.